Hello and welcome back to another episode of Mind of Steel. This is a weekly look at the mind and misadventures of Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. His name is Mark Steele and his conspiracy theories are so out there that even other members of the conspiracy truth movement find his views, well, a little bit objectionable. And that's going to be the subject of today's show. We're going to look at how Mark Steele has interacted with other members of the conspiracy truther movement. To begin with, what is this conspiracy truther movement? Well, it's the loose aggregation of people who believe in a wide range of conspiracy theories. They mainly source their news from alternative news sources, people like David Icke and Alex Jones. And as a result, they tend to live in a bizarre bubble. They believe things that you and I might find completely strange. And amongst them, we have people like Mark Steele, who have a strange sort of love-hate relationship with other members of this movement. Take, for example, this very strange message that Mark Steele posted on his Telegram, in which he is criticising another member of the truther movement. So we've got this uh, before you one character, but he continually posts uh, memes and nonsense. And the most serious thing is being linked back to child molesters, traffickers, right? A number of Brigade 77 members that they're into the kiddie stuff. I've had I don't think anyone is going to be surprised to see Mark Steele denouncing yet another person, accusing them of either being a child abuser or associating with child abusers. That's just Mark's go-to insult anytime he encounters somebody he doesn't like. And there's an awful lot of people that he disagrees with. So you can imagine Mark Steele spends a huge amount of time wildly accusing people of being child molesters. That's just what Mark Steele does. But what's interesting here is who he's accusing. The subject of his insults today is this other member of the truth movement. His name is Before You Are One. Well, at least that's his internet pseudonym. And he's an internet journalist. I I'd say just about everything that Before You Are One says, I personally disagree with. He is against the ULES, and that's the ultra low emission zone, a scheme operated in a number of British cities to reduce pollution. I personally think breathing in pollution is a bad idea, and I'd rather that my children don't have to do it. But uh, Before You Are One and his associates take a diametrically opposed view. Now, even though I disagree with Before You Are One on this issue, I'm going to say that things like the ULES, it's a matter of taxation. And, and I think that is a subject of legitimate political debate. Uh, and even though I disagree wholeheartedly with his position, I respect their rights to hold those positions. But uh, Before You Are One is a little bit upset with Mark Steele, because what Mark seems to be doing is bringing along his own zany associates and attaching them to the anti-ULES movement. Mark Steele wants to infiltrate the campaign with his very, very expert opinion that the cameras are photon weapons designed to kill you. We feel his very, very expert opinion will damage the campaign and urge all grassroots campaigns to stay well clear of this man. Mark Steele claims to be a committed member of the anti-ULES movement. But I think Before You Are One and the other anti-ULES campaigners probably have a legitimate gripe with Mark Steele because the way Mark Steele behaves and the people he chooses to associate with bring the anti-ULES movement into immediate and utter discredit. How could anybody believe a campaign that's based on these kinds of ridiculous claims? Down in London the is supporting the, the low emission zones guys, uh, but the real purpose of it is that. That there is not a camera. Right, it's not a camera, that's a multi-photon, multi-phased piece of battlefield-derived weaponry. Multi-photon ionizing radiation emission devices. That's what Mark Steele believes the ULES cameras are. They're not cameras in his imagination. They are deadly ray guns. These devices do not exist simply to record the, the license plates of the vehicles that pass through various intersections of our London city streets. No, they are there to uh, zap us, to evaporate us, to, to turn us into piles of dust when these things choose to be fired. When is that? Nobody knows, except maybe Mark Steele. And if he does know, he's not yet telling us. It's, it's all so mysterious. 
So it's no wonder that the people who are simply concerned with taxation and just wanting to drive their polluting vehicles are upset with Mark Seal because he is sending a completely confusing signal about their campaign. But it's not just Mark Steele's crazy ideas that are hampering the anti ULES campaign. It's the fact that he brings along some of his crazy friends, like uh, this guy. Do you recognize him? Two to modern day Jester right now, two to Mark Steele, and this amazing man here, Mr. Uh, Matt. Uh, what was your name, brother? Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy, yeah, yeah repping it up with the no, no ULES, actually doing a fantastic job. Uh, just want... It's truly bizarre that modern day Jester is part of the anti ULES movement. He doesn't own a car. He doesn't drive. I don't even think he has a driver's license. And I, for one, am profoundly grateful for the DVLA not to have issued a driver's license to modern day Jester. Imagine the chaos, the carnage that could occur if this man were allowed to become in control of a vehicle. He would be like the metaphorical bull in the china shop in which the bull would be represented by a two and a half ton speeding vehicle and the china shop would be our streets and bodies and everything that modern day Jester would crash into in his scatterbrained, harebrained life. It would be an utter disaster if modern day Jester were ever allowed to drive. So perhaps for him, this is the closest he will ever come to that freedom. But unfortunately, not so for his associate, this chap, Matt Hardy. Well, uh, we'll learn a little bit about what he's up to in the next few minutes. And what's your, um, what's your plan? Our plan, just go forward. We're going to defend ourselves from these weapons. We don't have to speculate much about how Matt Hardy intends to defend himself from these weapons. Fortunately, he has documented precisely his methods of self-defense on his TikTok. And here you can see Matt Hardy at work defacing one of the ULES cameras. There's one of the people, sticking stickers on people, not a criminal offence. No offences here, this is a civil matter. Come for a sedate wanker. Matt Hardy is a leading member of an organization called the Blade Runners, and they are a group associated with Mark Steele's Save Us Now, who intentionally tamper with the road traffic equipment. They are putting stickers on the camera lenses because they believe that that only makes them liable for a civil offence. Well, I don't think that's true. I think that if you're intentionally hampering the equipment whose purpose is to keep road users safe, well, you could be liable under the 1971 Criminal Damage Act. You could be liable of, for a public order offence or, or simply obstruction of justice because you are stopping the machines whose job it is to police our roads from working. I think Matt Hardy is an idiot and he is justifying his criminal damage of those cameras under an entirely bogus imagined scheme that, that he has invented all by himself. He's an idiot. And as we've seen from his TikTok, he is also associated with Mark Steele's Save Us Now. These are all Mark Steele's friends. They're all getting involved with the anti-ULES movement. If you were a member of the anti-ULES movement who simply wanted to have a good old protest about being told that you couldn't drive your old polluting vehicle, would you be upset if your protest movement had been entirely hijacked by Mark Steele and his merry bunch of wackaloons? Uh, that's exactly what's happening here. Here's Matt Hardy again talking to a journalist from the London Times. I told them they're, they're weapons, not cameras. Right. And we're defending ourselves from them. That's what it's all about. You're not going to write that in your newspaper. I know you're not. You won't be allowed. I won't be allowed to. You won't be allowed to write that in your newspaper. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's, it's, you it's won't be allowed your... to write that in your newspaper. It's your opinion, and I can it's, quote people on their opinions. But... Yeah. I don't subscribe to The Times or any Rupert Murdoch-owned media, but I'm sure Katie, the journalist from The Times, would be well within her rights to cite that person's opinion, to cite Matt Hardy, and report that he is a complete idiot. But what happens next is even more idiotic because Matt Hardy invites Mark Steele to speak to Katie, the journalist, and introduces him as kind of the leader of this movement. So it's clear to the mainstream press that the takeover is complete. Mark Steele now owns the London 
anti-ULEZ protest movement, despite the fact that he's brought a bunch of people who don't drive, don't live in London, and really have nothing to do with the London anti-ULEZ movement. Nevertheless, he has taken it over, and he has brought them all into such complete, ridiculous disrepute that it is so plain to see. I would be annoyed, I would be furious if I was one of those London-based anti-ULEZ protesters to have my movement taken over by a bunch of idiots. But that's exactly what's happened. So yeah, you, you want information. Mark, sort of... Mark knows everything. It's Times here, Mark. Hi. Times. Hi, my name's Hi. Katie. From Hi, Katie. Um, yep, just wondering why people have turned out today and want to hear a little bit more. I was just telling her about the weapons. I've come all the way from Newcastle in 2018. The government tried to gag me mm. uh, with a deployment of a, of a, of a demonstrable weapon yes, system. Does that man in the background wearing the white Save Us Now hoodie look kind of familiar? Almost like as if Mark Steele had a twin. And the answer is yes, that is Mark Steele's twin brother. His name is Graham Steele, and he's every bit as crazy as Mark Steele. He is the co-founder of the Save Us Now political party. and. He was there in London joining that protest. It's proof, if you ever needed it, that the London protests were entirely taken over by the Gateshead crew of Save Us Now and Mark Steele's completely crazy friends. But Matt Hardy isn't from Gateshead. He is a London local. But what he said to the journalist was entirely and utterly incriminating. Yeah, These things are weapons grade. I've seen a video of one getting slapped with a sledgehammer 20 times and it doesn't even dent it. They're weapons grade. They're, 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 they're a unit that's this big. They're a heavy unit. I've felt one. I picked it up in Biggin Hill. I picked one up in my hand and held it. It's a heavy unit. It's way too heavy to be a camera. Why do they... What was Katie the journalist from the Times supposed to make of Matt Hardy's bizarre confession. The fact that he had been bashing the cameras with sledgehammers whilst filming this and also cradling them in his hands. The fact that he, in his expert opinion about cameras, had come to the conclusion that it could not possibly be a camera because it was too heavy. Well, I'm sure Katie concluded, as we are concluding, that they are all a bunch of idiots. She saw that modern-day Jester was a complete imbecile. She saw that Matt Hardy was a self-confessed criminal who had been vandalising the camera system. And she saw that this whole thing was being masterminded by a pair of obvious grifters, Mark and Graham Steele, the founders of the Save Us Now political party, the force behind this protest. It was all down to them. I'm sure that's what she concluded because anybody watching this would conclude the exact same thing. They're not it's cameras, not they're camera. weapons. It's not a camera, it was the, the, the battlefield derived uh, battlefield interrogation equipment. And what actually happened? It makes perfect sense that the anti ULEZ campaigners in London are upset that a gang of crazies from Gateshead have attempted to take over their campaign. Grifters like Mark and Graham Steele, criminals like Matt Hardy, and complete imbeciles like Modern Day Jester. They are now attaching themselves to the London anti ulez campaign and making it part of their ridiculous grift. So it's no wonder that Before You Are One is attempting to call out Mark Steele. And that in turn explains why Mark Steele is demanding that before you are one, renounce Satan. Because as we all know, anybody who disagrees with Mark Steele must be a Satanist. So let's rejoin Mark in mid-denunciation and see what his opinion of this whole fiasco is. See, everyone should be announcing the synagogue of Satan, okay? We are dealing with the synagogue of Satan and these Satanists, you see? So I'm asking him again, you still haven't renounced Satan and all his works, so what's the hold up? Right, as I know you see, they cannot renounce their master. Here and now, do you renounce Satan and all his works and ways? It's a dead simple question, not complicated. I can answer that very quickly, right? Absolutely. Mark has renounced Satan and all of his works. And I'm hoping that that makes Mark feel wonderful. And in the glow of that wonderful feeling, Mark, maybe you should take the next obvious steps. Before you ask, before you are one and other members of the truth movement to renounce Satan and other fictional characters from a religion that, that they may or may not be part of, 
Why don't you renounce lying about your own career? Mark Steele claims to be a former Ministry of Defence weapons systems expert. I'm a weapons systems head up display expert. I'm a weapons systems expert. And I'm a weapons systems expert. No, you're not. You're a I'm a weapons systems expert. I'm not an electronics expert. I'm a weapons systems expert. I'm a weapons systems expert. Yeah. And Mark, before you piously demand that before you are one, renounce Satan, why don't you renounce shooting a teenage girl in the face? Because that's what you did while you were working as a pub bouncer at the Redskins pub in the town of Washington, which is near Gateshead, where you live, you recklessly discharged a firearm in an act of bravado and accidentally shot a teenage girl in the face, causing her to lose the ability to walk for a number of years. You caused massive amounts of harm to a real human being. It's really easy to demand that people renounce Satan and get into some kind of metaphysical worrying over a, a, a being that may or may not exist according to your spiritual worldview. But Mark, you really did lie about your career and you really did shoot a teenage girl in the face. So Mark, until you can come to terms with your own crimes, you really don't have a leg to stand on, especially not when you're criticizing other members of your own movement. Hasn't it been another exciting delve into the mystical murky world of Mark Steele? And if you join me in one week's time, I will be sure to have some more fresh delicacies of idiocy prepared for you, sliced up into bite-sized morsels, served on a platter and offered to you for your delectation. See you in a week.